hello guys welcome back to the channel today we're going to be looking at this dinkies castrol fuel tanker i think it if i'm right in saying it's a studebaker or studebaker I'm not too sure how to pronounce it but as you can see it, it's quite old this one i say it's made by dinkies and it's um actually a meccano limited so we firstly just got to take out these two little um little posts just because they're like raised i'm going to take a file to them just file them down a little touch get a flat end, edge and then makes it a little bit easier to drill them out so we start off just just flatten them again with a little file not too much just a little bit you know just stops the drill slipping and then we can get a center punch in there <clears throat> There's one punched in. Let's line it up. Oh, it was a bit tough. See if we can get a better angle. A little bit more file required there, I think. Not gone down enough. Right, let's get the drill on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So well, it doesn't really take much. It's just a, a little tiny bit. Just to take the heads off the uh, the post rivets, whatever you want to call them, the mushrooms. So there's no interior or glass on this model, so it's 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 a very, pretty straightforward, really. Carefully does it. Okay, that should do. Just sort of, I think I slipped with this first one, so I'm just filing it down again. Just get the um, the top of the header because it, it sort of went to the left a tiny little bit, so I just wanted to clear that up and then I'll get the punch on it and go again. Here we go, it's better. I just don't want to damage the base on this with it being such an old one. And I want to keep the patina on the base. Because it's, uh, it, to be fair, it's not that bad. It's got a little bit of rust on it, as you can expect. But the paint work from the original uh, spray is still there. And so I'm just going to clean the base up. Because I, I want to leave a little bit of patina to the model. So I'm basically just going to focus on the, um, the body itself. And the wheels. So what I'm trying to do as little damage as possible to the base. This one just take me time a little bit. So I'll just wiggle the tires. I'm gonna use this like a, a bit like a power hammer now. Because you just keep pushing it against where you've drilled and the shock of it like the spring mechanism inside the punch. It, it's like a little uh, it gives it like a little shock and it just makes it pop out easier. Saves you bend in the base because these are really thin bases on these old models. I think they used the, I think it was tin. I'm not too sure, but it's it's really uh, it's really flimsy, and I, I just don't want to bend it. So we'll just start popping off the back now, little wiggles. There she is. Just prise her up a touch. There we go. <laughs> she popped off there, all right, didn't she? So I'll just recover the wheels, the rear axle. Oh, that was great. The rear axle just sits in the back. They're not, they're not actually broken. It just sits in like the little divot there. 
and when the base goes on the wheels are tucked up at the back so the actual wheels don't need to be fitted to the axles on the rear they just sit in so is the base not too bad it turned out okay I thought it bent the front of it to be fair but putting it back in now and having a look it's actually shaped that way just there I thought it bent it It's really play worn, a few little nicks here and there, but to be fair, the age of it, it's not too bad. So let's get the paint off, get it stripped. So here she is, come out with the caustic. I didn't bother filming this because I put it in another model and it was like only the one piece that just went in, so that's why I didn't film it. I'm just going to get a little piece of say, Scotch bright here now, just go over and get all the uh, oxidisation off it. Just clean it up ready. So it's, it's not too bad this one it's, it's a nice easy one to do there's a few cast lines on it so we, we'll deal with them in a minute I don't really want to use the power tools on this one I'm going proper old school bit of elbow grease She is, she's starting to come up nice now. That's where the cast lines are there, just on the back end, either side. I didn't really notice them before, but now the paint's off and I'm doing this and you can see a lot more detail. They, they are really uh, obvious, so I'm going to have to deal with them because they're starting to bug me, to be fair. Let's get under these wheel arches done. And a bumper, all this cleared up. So that's about right now. Let's uh, let's deal with these cast marks. You just see them there. There's a little blemish as well in in the metal. So I'll try my best to try and work that out. But I'm not I'm not going to push this one too hard. As I say, with it being so old. Just work it gradually. Just trying to maintain the line of the um the model itself as well. It's in like with it being like on an angled an angled part. I wanna try and keep the flow of the model. Not make it obvious that it's being ground down, you know. A few people comment on the way I use a file as well, because as you say, everybody has their own way of using tools, but I used to make jewellery from like precious metals and stuff and when you do that, you when when you use a file, it's like a hacksaw in a way. It's got teeth on on the base of the file, and they only cut when you go forwards. When you're coming back, they don't actually do nothing. So it, to me, it's wasted energy, and I like to keep everything as as smooth as possible, and you get a better finish. So that's the way I use a file. Is just I go forwards, lift it off, go forwards, lift it off, and then 
eventually when you're doing it like say you're making a wedding ring or whatever you and you've got to like solder it to join it and all the rest of it well when you file it with a file if you just go back and forth back and forth it does file it down but you're left with scratch marks so if you do it the way i'm doing it now lifting it up and just going one way you can actually polish metal with a file and you will get a really nice finish and the lines have gone it's the motion of bringing your file back that leaves a scratch or a mark so that that's just explaining why i file the way i do it's more habit than anything but it's it's also just the process that i learned to do in the jewelry it just leaves less marks and what have you and gives me a better finish when i'm painting when i use these things it's not too bad because they're quite smooth this is just something that like the wife got me really to be honest she, she bought a load of stuff for her nails and i sort of pinched the first one so when she went and replaced all her stock she she bought me a few of these new little file gizmo things and do you know what they're absolutely fantastic they're all marked different colors and stages so you can like you start off with number one obviously the rougher end and then you just work your way around the pad and by the time you get to like number six it's buffed and it's polished and it's absolutely fantastic little tool so i swear by these so if you haven't got one of these guys they're only like a pound absolutely fantastic little tool just working it round now different different steps and as you can see you still got the blemish but the casting line's gone and there's no scratches on the metal so that's fantastic i'm pleased with that so there's one on the other side there so we just work it in and start doing it <laughs> few little marks on the top there just going to buff them out like with the little chips where the little flea bites there's like little nicks on the top so that's what I'm doing here I'm just smoothing it out getting a better edge sometimes I feel I spend far too much time with all these little fiddly bits i usually cut them all out the videos because i do get a bit obsessed doing it but i enjoy doing it i think if you're gonna do it you might as well do it right you know take your time and do it properly otherwise what's the point eh there we go it's a lot better So I'll do the other cast line now off camera because there's no point showing you twice and then we'll come back. So here's the base, as I say. It's, I'm going to leave the patina to this one. I'm going to give it a little clean. The electric toothbrush on it. Just gentle clean. Just hot soapy water. That's all that I'm using. So I, th I think it's nice to leave the patina on models if you can. So I'm not trying to hide the fact that it's, it's being played with and it's an old vehicle, you know. Somebody's had some fun with it, so I'm just making it look pretty. I'll try and. Just give a quick dry off. And that should do it. I think that's all right. It's not a bad nick. And I think it's nice, as I say, just have a little bit of patina on it. On it. So I'm going to leave that as is. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get outside and paint it. I had to use a rattle can on this because for the life of me, I tried and tried and tried to get the right colour. And it, anyway, it, it wasn't working. But you can see, look at the speed of the bloody paint come onto this rattle can. It flew out. It covered really quickly. I thought it's not a bad day outside today, so why don't we take it outside and nice little backdrop of the mountain where I live. So back inside now, 
just cleaning up the wheels and getting them ready for paint. So what I've done, I've just put them onto a cocktail stick and wedged them on a little touch, give them a clean up with the electric toothbrush. Let's get all them years of grime and rubbish off. I was gonna actually leave these this this colour, but as you can see the paint on my fingers there, it's it's just ever so slightly off. So I thought no, I might as well just um just do it. So I'm cleaning it up, just ready to give them a little uh, a little lick of paint. Just to tie the wheels into the model more. So that's the first one done. And these are the wheels off the back axle, as I say, they just slide onto the axle. The other one done now, just rinse this off a touch. should do it let's give it a little rinse come up nice and clean right so let's put these in the little booth and give them a quick blast of paint it actually started raining outside so that's why i didn't go back out to the store so I'll just stick the fan on this booth give it a quick blade and it'll be fine as you can see the color difference there it's ever so slight but it would have stood out you know i thought it'd be better just to they stuck to my fingers there just to keep it all all uniformed and See how fast that paint's going up that rattle can. It was so hard to judge it, you know, that's why it's uncovered in it. So I'm just giving it a little dab now, make sure that there's no drips inside the wheel uh, where the where the tires sit so there's no deformities. So let's do the detail on the uh, the body. So again I'm using the Sharpie, the metal coloured range Sharpies, this is the silver one. Just to put a little bit of detail on the top of the, uh, I don't even know what these are called, but the fuel covers where they, they fill the um, the truck up. Or the tanker up, should I say. Let's zoom in a little touch so we can see. Apologise in advance for when I'm doing this detail work as my hands do get in the way a little bit but it's so hard to try and do the job properly and also try and show you guys what I'm doing but at times you, you have to you have to sacrifice your, your viewing for a little while just so I can get the detail done properly you know the way you've got to hold it and the camera's in the way and what have you so I do apologise if, if I give you a few shots of my hands but for the most part I managed to, to do okay I think so it's not rocket science this bit, it's just a little bit of a steady hand and not doing too much, not doing too little, just trying to keep the balance right. And the thing that annoyed me with this one is I've got a printer and I done the, the decals on the computer. I would have run out of ink. So I tried to replace my ink and I went to the manufacturers of the name of the printer and I don't know why but they don't list a restock for the the um the ink for my printer. 
when I put in the number of the model and all the rest of it, it doesn't recognise that they sell that product pr printer. So I'm a bit stumped, I can't replace my ink and I don't want to buy another printer. So this model suffered the effects of that, so I, I've got no decals for this one, so it's just going to have to be left for now until I can source the right one. So I'm, I'm probably just going to order the set, to be honest, but I don't know what to do about my printer. I'm quite gutted because it's a, it's a cracking printer as well and it's really new, so... I don't want to just ditch it and buy another one just for the sake of getting ink. So I really don't know what to do there. Anyway, let's get back to the model, what we're doing. I'm just putting a bit of detail now on the little, um, oh God, the little bonnet piece at the top. What's that called? Oh, it's, it's gone. I can't remember. And then we'll move on to the headlights and the grill and the bumper. Try and keep a steady hand here, not to ruin any paintwork with the slip. I should do it. Just to the lights. I was going to use the Molotow, the, the chrome pen, but I just thought it, it was too much. It was too blingy for the, the age of this vehicle, so I just thought, just, just keep with the Sharpie. I think that's just the, it's the right tone for this age of vehicle. It, it look it suits it, you know. It's not not in your face. It just does what it needs to do. It gives it more of the aluminium look rather than a blinged up chrome look, which to me I think it looks better to be honest. The chrome's great, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it would have suited this vehicle. So it is where you're getting a nice shot of my hand instead of the model. I do apologise. And take this opportunity while I'm, you're just watching me do this to uh, thank all my regular subscribers for coming back every video and leaving nice comments and interacting it's fantastic I do appreciate you guys and I'd like to thank all my new subscribers and welcome you to the channel and the community and please do get involved leave comments I love hearing from everybody and I answer every single comment and if you're not actually subscribed and you're liking what you see and you want to see the next video then please hit the subscribe button, it's free. And as I say, it just shows that you don't miss out any videos, especially if you hit the little bell icon for notifications. That'd be fantastic. So thank you guys for all your support. I really appreciate every one of you guys. Appreciate, sorry, every one of you guys. So thank you very much. Bit awkward getting into these little nooks and crannies with this, this big fat tip, you know. But we just work away at it. We'll we'll get it. Let's do the front grill now. This should be fun. Say so it looks all right. It's one view. You you start doing it, and you think, yeah, that looks great. And then you just have a little bit of a turn, and the light catches it from a different angle, and it looks like you haven't even done anything. So you've got to do it about three or four times from different angles. Make sure you get everywhere, otherwise it looks really stupid. I'm trying to do it here with, without covering your view as well, which adds to the awkwardness. As I was saying there, you can see once you turn it upside down, you start to show other areas that you've missed. That's what I was talking about. Just a little bit at the bottom there. 
bottom corner. Excuse the big fat hand. See, I've missed a little bit there again. So what I'll do is I'll finish this off camera because it's going to take too long. Right, so let's remind ourselves what we started off with. We had a play one with lots of little flea bites, nicks and knocks and what have you. And then there's a few little shots before it goes on the wheel. But this is what we ended up with without stickers. But I think it still looks quite nice. It, it done, done it justice, I think. And then we'll put it on the little um, the little rotary give you the final shot so stick around and watch the end bit and thank you very much for watching as i say if you enjoyed the video please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already like and comment and i shall catch you guys in the next video thank you very much guys stay safe bye bye for now